DIY.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a pergola on top of this, which is nicely used for making shade and decoration. But let's get going, I'll show you how to do it. All right. On the end of the pergola, which really doesn't serve any purpose except for the decoration. Now you see, it took some time, and I just made a couple little curves here, made it nice and nice. There's a million different ways you can do it, this particular way I like it. You see, this is the piece that I cut off. But what we're going to do, we're going to use this as a template so we can keep these all the same. But we're simply just going to get another board, show you. And the piece that I cut off, we're going to square it all up like that, just by with hand. And just get a pencil and mark it out. This way, they're all going to be the same. Now I'm going to, get it, going to get the jigsaw and cut this out nice, nice. One tip I give you on cutting with the jigsaw, that you don't want to cut it fast. You want to go nice and slow. But especially with the jigsaw, you, or any saw, you don't want to go backwards. So when you're cutting, always keep it going. Don't stop and go, because otherwise you're definitely you see it. So let's get going on cutting. I'm going to show you how to cut one. You see, it was one continuous cut. I didn't stop and slow down at all. I just kept it going. Even if I thought I was going wrong, like here, you can see on the line, it wasn't exactly on the line. But look at that. If I would have stopped or backed up, that would have looked really bad. And I would have had to be sanding it for quite a long time. But what we're going to do now, we're just going to give the sander, though, a little sanding on the edges here to round them off a little bit so it's not such a point here. All right? All right, as I explained, now we're going to just sand this edge here. We're going to have a quick sanding with a little power sander, round orbital sander, uh, like a 80 grit sandpaper. But it's going to be real important that I only keep the sander up on this sharp edge here and not hit the flat. We want, don't want to touch this at all. If we were going to paint it, that would be fine. But in this case, this is a cedar wood, which is very expensive. We're going to seal it, and those sandpaper marks will definitely show out. So we want to stay away from it. So real quickly... Put the sander. You see, that didn't take any more than 10 seconds. It's got a nice rounder edge on it. I mean, that looks pretty nice. So now, I'm going to go and cut and sand all of them. In this case, we have about 30 of them to cut. So after we're done cutting them and sanding them, then we'll get back to building it. All right, well, we went and cut all the tops here when we sanded the edges. I went ahead and stained them with a nice UV water protection. That will keep it looking good for many years. One thing I didn't show you earlier is we, we cut the end of it with our little template that we made. And being that on our deck, we're making it 10 feet wide, but we're going to have a foot overhang. So meaning, this section here is going to overhang a foot outside of the main beams that hold it up. So, we've got a foot on this end, our 10 foot from here, plus another foot. So in this case, it makes it a 12 foot long piece. So, let's get going and put these up, and I'll show you how to do it. Alright, we went ahead and put our main beam up just by securing it with a couple screws for now which will more than hold it for the time being onto our 4x4 four four post. I'm going to show you how to put the cross pieces in because you have your main beam which would run across which is a single piece or sometimes even a, a double piece. It could be done in a couple different ways. Um, I like this, what, this method and this particular uh, design. I think it will look the best. And below the height issue so I want to get it up higher. 
because of the other staircase. So, it's real simple. What you're going to do is grab it. Play it from one to the other. And stand it up. And on this side, I have a mark right in here. Like I said, it's going to overhang that foot. Basically, it's going to end up looking like that. And then we're going to go ahead and secure it with screws right down to this main one. And then we're going to continue putting them all in, 16 inches apart on center. Okay. Okay, now we're all ready to get going with the rest of these. We have our beams that are going to hold up front and back. Put one in, right on the edge here. I mean, whatever looks good to you. Put big signs on it. And I went ahead and marked on top of my beam every 16 inches. And that's where I'm going to place these. It's a lot easier to mark them now, so I can just keep going with them. So let's get going. Alright, as you see, we put all the rafters up on top, and they're all nicely secured. But they're only secured with the single screw holding it on the angle. Any snow load, ice, or even heavy wind, they'll knock over. So what we're going to do, we're going to run a 2x4 perpendicular. And in this case, we're going to run one on this end, in the middle, and again on the other end. And that will just tighten it up nice, nice. Just a 2x4, laying on top, some screws down to each, to each rafter, though, and that will make it nice and tight. Well, as you can see, we're all done. And look at that thing. It looks pretty damn good. I use cedar because I really like the cedar. It's a lot lighter. When you see me pulling those boards up with one hand, of course, the cedar is a really nice light wood, which makes it much, that much nicer. I put a sealer on it, so it'll always look like that. Anyway, I'm Dominic from AskMeDIY.com. If you have any more helpful home tips, come see me.